Hi folks, Mr. Prepare here with you again. We are going to spend this video talking about a concept called incidence of taxation or tax incidence and see how that concept relates to the concept of elasticity. Essentially what we're going to be figuring out here is when the government imposes an excise tax or a per unit tax, we're going to try to figure out how much of that tax is ultimately paid for by the consumer how much of that is ultimately paid for by the producer. So when we say incidence of taxation, we're basically talking about a, the burden of taxation. How much of a particular tax is paid for by individuals and then how much of that is going to be paid for by consumers. Unless we're dealing with the situation of perfect elasticity of supplier demand or perfect inelasticity of supplier demand, the amount of a per unit tax is going to be partially paid by both producer and consumer. And in most instances worldwide, it's the producer that collects the tax and then it will send the proceeds of this per unit tax on to the government. So, let's do some analysis. We're going to take a look at just a normal market. And when I impose a per unit tax, what I'm doing uh, is I am placing an increased amount of price on each individual quantity that is available for sale. So what that looks like then is a shift of the supply curve. Now it isn't. There hasn't been any change in supply. All we've done is we've increased the price of every unit available for sale in the market by the vertical distance of the tax. So these red arrows would represent the per unit amount of the tax. And so when we label our new supply curve, we're going to label it supply, but including the tax. And so this, again, this red vertical distance here between S and S plus tax is the per unit amount of the tax. So if this happens then, we really have the establishment of a new market price and market quantity where the S plus tax curve intersects with the demand curve at point A. P2 then will be our new market price and Q2 will be our new market quantity. Note that market quantity has fallen from QI to Q2. I also want you to make note of something else. Take a look at the vertical distance here, which is the per unit amount of the tax. And then what I want you to do is compare that vertical distance to the vertical distance associated with the change in the market price from P initial to P2. It looks like the value of the tax is greater and that is indeed the case. So what this means then is that the, the consumers have paid some of that per unit tax but it is also the producers that have paid another portion of it which underscores the idea that for any excise tax or per unit tax uh, the burden of the tax is going to be shared among producers and consumers. Let's see how that really looks then in this further analysis of the diagram. Point C is important for us to establish because uh, it allows us to get a, a, an idea of the price that the producer is going to be able to keep. Now I found point C by taking a look at the new market quantity and where that market quantity bisected this, the initial supply curve. And I made a note of that price. This is the price that the producer gets to keep as a result of the sales. Now, he's ultimately collecting price P2, but remember he has to deliver some of that, the proceeds of the, each sale to the government in the form of taxation. And so he's going to pass P2 minus P3, this amount, off to the government, and he's going to be able to keep the rest. So this pink shaded area then represents the burden of the taxation or the incidence of taxation that's paid for by the consumer. It's the market price, initial market price, 
and then it's the new market price. So it's the consumer that's been paying that per unit increase times all the units that have been for sale, which is zero to Q2. And so this rectangular shaped area represents the burden of taxation, the incidence of taxation on the consumer. To find the tax burden on the producer, Again, we take the market price and we find the difference between the market price and the amount that the producer gets to keep. And again, we have another kind of revenue box here. And that, that gray shaded area box represents the burden on the producer. If we were to take this together, right, this rectangular area that's bounded by P3, C, A, and P2, we would get the total amount that's paid to the government after being collected by the producer. Now I want you to make a note of something else. If we were to, I were to ask you what the, in, uh, the original total revenue that was collected by the firm before the imposition of the tax was, hopefully you would say, well, that was zero, Q initial, B, and PI. And so we would have this rectangular shaped revenue box. After the imposition of the tax, I want you to take a look at the new revenue that uh, the firm gets to keep after the tax has been imposed. Zero, Q2 now because sales have dropped, C and P3 because it's P3 that is the price that the, con the producer gets to keep. So this revenue box is noticeably smaller. And so we've seen for the firm the result is of a really any any tax is going to be uh, probably a fall in total revenue. Now we have another area here, the triangular shaped area bounded by A, B, C triangle. And what is what is that? Well, that's a, a, an efficiency loss because we've passed this particular tax. We've lost, or society has lost some amount of consumer surplus and some amount of producer surplus. When we combine that total, we call that either a total loss of efficiency or deadweight loss to society. So, uh, this is a great graph showing you the basics of how to figure out the incidence of taxation. The next thing we have to do is see how this concept of incidence of taxation affects or is impacted by elasticity. And so really what we're going to figure out is the incidence of an excise tax or a per unit tax given different elasticities of supply and demand. We're going to start with a case of inelastic demand first. And note that I've drawn a very nice steep, steeply sloped demand curve to indicate relative inelasticity. When I pass my tax, remember, it looks like a shift in the demand curve or supply curve, not really but that's what it looks like. And remember that the vertical distance between S and S plus tax is the per unit amount of the tax. So I'm going to label that S plus tax. I'm going to make a note of where that, new, that tax intersects my demand curve. That's going to be my new market price. Note the increase of P initial to P2, and likewise the decrease in the quantity demanded from Q initial to Q2. And that's not a big drop in demand. Uh, sorry, quantity demanded. Now I need to figure out the price that the consumer gets to keep. I find that again uh, where the new market quantity intersects the su initial supply curve, and this is P3 here. And this analysis shows me that with inelastic demand, it is the consumer that is going to bear most of the tax burden and that is indicated by the pink shaded area. The producer's tax burden is represented by the gray shaded area and you see that that is relatively smaller. You know why is that? It's because our consumers cannot change their buying patterns as a result of the increase in, in price and so they're going to shoulder the burden of the tax increase. We still have some degree of deadweight loss or uh, loss of efficiency uh, to society and I've noted that in my orange triangular box. Let's take a look now at the case of elastic demand. So you'll see now that I've drawn a nice shallowly sloped demand curve. I'm going to pass my tax. I'm going to label the new curve S plus tax. 
I'm going to make a note of where that tax intersects my demand curve. I'm going to establish my new market price and my new market quantity. Note that in this particular case, that the market quantity has fallen by quite a great bit. The next thing I need to figure out is the price that the producer gets to keep, P3. And um, I note then that the taxation burden in this particular case with any or with elastic supply has not fallen as much on consumers as it has fallen on producers. Why is that? It's because the demand is elastic and that means that consumers are sensitive to prices changes and that they've had the ability in this case to probably substitute out of consuming this particular good or service and that then leaves the producers with bearing the burden of the taxation. We still have, in fact, quite a great deal in this particular case of dead weight loss or loss of efficiency to society. Now let's take two more cases. The first case, inelastic supply. I've drawn a nice, steeply sloped supply curve. To find the tax, I'm going to uh, shift my supply curve up by the amount of the per unit tax, label my new supply curve S plus tax, find out where that tax intersects my demand curve and establish a new market price and a new market quantity. Then I have to figure out the amount or price that the consumer gets to keep, or sorry, the producer gets to keep. And in this particular case, I note that it looks like it is going to be the consumer that gets off with the lighter tax burden, and it's going to be the producer it is going to pay, bay, bear the brunt of this particular tax. Why is that? It's because the producer cannot make any supply changes as a result of the imposition of the tax, and so he's going to be stuck with bearing most of the burden of that taxation. We still have some degree of uh, inefficiency, uh, dead weight loss to society, and again, I've indicated that in orange. Last one. Uh, case of elastic supply, so I've drawn a nice shallowly sloped supply curve here. I'm going to uh, shift the supply curve, or what looks like a shift of the supply curve, to S plus tax. The vertical distance between those two curves, again, represents the per unit amount of the tax. I find out where that tax intersects the demand curve, and I establish a new market price and quantity at P2 and Q2, respectively. Then I want to take a look at the price that the producer is ultimately getting to keep here at P3. I now note that, relatively speaking, it's going to be the consumer that bears most of the burden of this taxation relative to the uh, consumer. And why is this? Well, it's because of elastic supply, and as a result of the imposition of the tax, the producer's been able to make some changes fairly quickly. And that means uh, he's able to shift out of producing this particular good or service and produce something else. So it's going to leave the consumer with uh, paying the brunt of this particular tax. Note again, uh, the dead weight loss to society because of the imposition of the tax at triangle ABC. So what have we learned here? Well, um, really uh, five things, I guess. The biggest thing is that... Um, the concept of incidence of taxation or tax incidence is highly related to the concept of elasticity. But we also have four situations that you might want to commit to memory. In the case of inelastic demand, it's the consumers that can't change their buying patterns, and so they're going to pay the burden of the tax. With respect to the inelastic supply, it's the producers that cannot change their production uh, uh, capabilities and their production possibilities, and so they're going to pay the tax burden. With a case of elastic demand, uh, consumers can change, uh, and so it's going to be then the producers that pay the tax burden. With the case of elastic supply, it's producers that can change, and so it's the consumers that are going to pay the tax burden. So I hope it's clear how these two concepts are related. Um, I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.